1965, age 9. Due again to rent owed in the last house, we were forced to move to this old grey tenement building in Paisley Road in Kinnan Park next to Govan in Glasgow. My cousin William got this place for us. It was a derelict building, it had been abandoned for a few years. The whole block was due for demolition and was all boarded up by steel shutters on the doors and the windows. To get into it we had to open up and bend the steel shutter from the entrance to the close which once inside was littered with old cans and bottles and rubbish. But we had nowhere to go, we were homeless and had little money. I remember William and my dad once inside the close going up the dark stairs using matches to light the way till we got candles then getting two flights up and both of them prizing this metal shutter away which was barricading the door up bending it over far enough for all of us to squeeze through and go into. Once inside there was so much mess again more empty bottles, cans, boxes, a lot of rubble. There was no electricity, gas or heating. We bought these thick candles to see with and we got a wee portable paraffin heater and a one ring cooker the size of a shoebox and we made a lot of tins of soup and beans and stew on it. Also we could make if we were lucky, some toast, if my dad could do it right. I remember loving the toast, it was all warm and tasty. In fact, anything warm was good when you were hungry and you had no heat. The kitchen could not be used as cupboards were all falling on the floor and you had to climb over them to get to the sink, which was full of beetles and spiders and other creepy crawlies. But the cold water had not been turned off, thankfully. This helped when we had to wash or we had to use the toilet. As the flush didn't work in the toilet, we had to get a basin, fill it with water, then take it to the toilet and throw it down the pan to clear it every time we used it. I used to hold it in until the morning as I did not like to go into that toilet at night. I slept in an old mattress on the floor in a bedroom while my mum and dad were along the hall on another old double mattress on the floor in the living room. I wanted to be in the same room as them but I guess they wanted time alone with each other and this was understandable. At night I could see the rats coming out of the various holes in the wall scurrying about the floor. They never came near me though. They seemed to keep along the skirting boards the noises they made were horrible, all scratching and squeaking sounds, and there was an awful lot of them. I think one night I actually counted, and there was about 14 in all different sizes and colours. My dad would come in and hit them with his shoes or a bit of wood, and that would keep them quiet for a while. I usually kept a candle lit until the morning, as I thought the candlelight and flame would keep them away from me. But you couldn't tell if it was morning or night as the windows were all barricaded up with iron sheets with just tiny cracks of light coming through sometimes in the morning. We out most nights, usually bags of chips. We were only there for two weeks but it seemed such a long, long time. I was very frightened living there, more scared than I had ever been. When I was sent to the shops I was told not to let anyone see me or let them see me go out the close as when I did come in the close it was so scary. It was just so dark and dusty. I hated walk up, walking up those stairs as the odd, odd rat would often run down and frighten me. I may have been a Glasgow boy but this was taking fear to a new level for me. One which I was struggling to cope with, like when we lived in Salkoats, I was scared as well. Again here, I never really went to school, and no school board or anyone in authority knew of my existence or where we were 
Nobody knew that our family were living up in this place. During the day, some days, we would visit or sit in a cafe. At night, for some entertainment, we would just listen to the radio, which had batteries. But the nights were long here, very long, and I kind of kind of understood how hard it was for my parents, for us during this period. I think my dad went up to the housing offices to try and get a house every single day, pestering them for a home so we could escape this place. <laughs>